In this video, I'll show you how to implement a simple daily login reward system using Nakama and the Go server runtime that will allow you to reward your players with in-game currency the first time they log into your game each day. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll assume you already have a Nakama server project up and running on your machine, but just in case you don't, I'll leave all the links to the installation documentation in the description below, as well as a link to the Nakama project template repository which will give you everything you need to get started. We'll start by opening up our server project in VS Code and opening the main.go file. Here, we'll initialize our custom server runtime code and register our RPCs, which can then be called using a Nakama client, such as the Unity client I'll show you later in the video. Inside the init module function, we're registering two RPCs. The first, can claim daily reward, will be used by the client to determine whether or not the user is eligible to claim their reward for the day. The result of this RPC will allow the client to enable or disable the claim button in the game's UI. The second, claim daily reward, will be called by the client when the user clicks on the button to claim their daily reward. Next, we'll open up the module's dailyrewards.go file, which contains the implementation for these two RPCs. You'll see that to begin, we define a struct called daily reward. This struct has a single property called last claim unix. This value will store the Unix timestamp for when the user last claimed their daily reward. We'll store this information in the Nakama storage engine each time the player claims a reward. For our can claim daily reward RPC, we start by declaring a response variable, which is a simple struct containing a boolean value which will indicate whether or not the user is eligible to claim their daily reward for the day. Next, we get the latest daily reward object for the user by calling the get last daily reward object function, which we'll look at in a moment. If an error occurred, we return an appropriate error response. Once we have the daily reward object, we pass it to the can user claim daily reward function. This will return a boolean value indicating whether or not the user is eligible to claim. We use this value in the response object. Finally, we'll serialize the response to JSON and return it to the user. A lot of the implementation details of this RPC are encapsulated in the get last daily reward object and the can user claim daily reward functions. So let's dive into those now. Inside the get last daily reward object function, we first create a new daily reward object and then set its last claim Unix value to zero. This gives us an empty object in case the user has never claimed a reward before. Next, we fetch the user's ID, which we'll use shortly. We then use the storage read API to attempt to get a stored daily reward object with a key of daily in the reward collection. If no object is found, we return the empty reward object. Otherwise, we attempt to deserialize the object into a daily reward object variable. If there's an error when deserializing, we'll return an error. Otherwise, we return the object. For the can claim daily reward function, we calculate when midnight was as a time object, and then check that the last claim Unix time was before it. If it was, the user is eligible to claim another reward. Now that we've covered the helper functions, let's continue by looking at the claim daily reward RPC. Here, we grab the user's ID as we have before. Next, we define a response object that will tell the user how many coins they received. We then use the getLastDailyRewardObject function to find out when the user last claimed a reward, followed by checking to see if this user is eligible. If they are, we set the coins received value to 500 and create a change set object that defines how we want to update the user's virtual wallet within Nakama. Here, we specify that we want to increase the coins value by 500. We then call nk.walletUpdate to apply the change to the user's wallet. With the wallet updated, we send the user a notification, letting them know that they've received a reward. We give the notification a code that identifies to the client what this notification represents. In this instance, we've chosen a code of 1001, but you could use any positive integer here. We pass a content object that contains the amount of coins they were rewarded. We specify that we want this notification to be persistent and that it comes from the server. We then give it a subject and specify which user should receive it, that being the user that triggered the request. After sending the notification, we update the last claim Unix timestamp to be the current Unix timestamp and then serialize the reward object to JSON. Next, we check to see if we were given a previous daily reward storage object. If we were, we grab its version property. We then write the updated reward object back to the storage engine, passing in the updated value as well as the version we just grabbed. By passing the version of the previous reward object, we ensure that no other writes have been made in the time between us retrieving it initially and writing this update. Finally, we serialize our response to JSON and send it back to the user. 
With the two RPC functions implemented, we're ready to test our daily reward system. In order to test it, we're going to need to run the server, which we'll launch via Docker. For this project, I have a Docker file and a docker-compose.yaml script set up that will build the Go module and copy it into our Nakama image. You can read more about configuring Nakama to run via Docker by following the link in the description. Let's launch our server now by running docker compose op. With our server up and running, we'll open our Unity project and test it out. First, let's create a brand new user. Now that we're logged in, let's go and take a look at the server console. You can see that we have a debug log entry that tells us the can claim daily reward RPC was called, and it sent back a can claim daily reward value of true. Going back to our demo, it's received this value and it's now showing us that we can claim our daily reward, so let's do that now. Okay, we've claimed our 500 coins. Let's take a look at the server logs again. You'll see we have another debug log entry that tells us the claim daily reward RPC was called and it passed back a JSON object with a coins received value of 500. Perfect. Now let's go back to our demo. We'll log out and then log back in. You can see that it's now telling us that we've already claimed our daily reward. Checking the server logs, you can see that we again called the can claim daily reward RPC and this time it returned a can claim daily reward value of false. Just to make sure this works for different users, let's log out and create a new user. You can see for this user, we're eligible to claim our reward. Nice. One last thing I'd like to show you is how all this looks in the Nakama console. You can access this by going to 127.0.0.1 colon 7351 in your browser. The default login credentials are admin and password. Once here, let's go and have a look at the account section. You can see that the two accounts we just created are listed here. Let's take a note of the ID for the first user we created. Now let's head over to the storage section. You can see we have two records here, both in the rewards collection and both with a key of daily. These are the two daily reward records for the users we created. Just to test that our logic is working, let's drill into the record assigned for the first user. Here we can see the value of this object and we can actually go in and modify it. Let's update the last claim Unix value to be some time further in the past and then save it. Now let's head back to our demo and log back in as our first user. You can see that it's now telling us we're eligible to claim our daily reward again. With that done, we've successfully implemented our daily login reward system using Nakama server runtime code. In this example, we used Go. However, Nakama also supports Lua and TypeScript, so feel free to experiment with those as well. If you'd like to learn more about how Nakama can power your multiplayer game, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified when we release new tutorial content just like this one. To dive into some deeper topics on Nakama's multiplayer and social features, head on over to our documentation site at heroiclabs.com forward slash docs. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.